Okay, great. And we welcome you inside the Memorial Coliseum IPFW in their home opener of the 07-08 basketball season against Valpo. Tommy Sheckler along with Keon Henderson. We're going to get to the starting lineups as we got started here a little late. We apologize, we had some technical difficulties, but hey, it's early on in the season. We'll get it right here soon. But right now we go to the first possession of the basketball game and a quick whistle right away on DeWitt Scott for IPFW. The starting lineup for the Dons, or we'll start with Valpo. It's Arulia Igbavoa starting. He is a player that you're gonna wanna watch out for for the Crusaders. McPherson is a point man. He's gonna get them into their offense. And other starters for, for the uh, Crusaders is Hoppe, Diebler, and Huff as they score the opening possession of the game, a three for Valpo right off the bat. We'll get to the Don starting lineup here as the ball is kicked out of bounds. Starting in the starting lineup, Ben Botts is in there. He, of course, had the great game the other night against Wisconsin. Jakari Johnson, DeWitt Scott, as well as Jerron Burroughs. And that is the way that the starting lineup looks for IPFW. Let's get 
to their first possession of the game here. They're down three nothing early. Like we said, this is their opening possession and that's Shikari Johnson getting inside and getting an easy two. Hoppers look pretty excited to be out there today. Hopper is coming off of that screen and is looking good early. DeWitt looks like he's giving it all he can to stick up with him. And a uh, quick foul there on Jerron Burroughs. So two quick fouls picked up by the Dons. Jerron Burroughs getting tagged for one and DeWitt Scott for another. So two team fouls and we're less than a minute in. But at least you see the Dons out challenging the Crusaders on the wing. It's a team in Valpo that was a very young team a year ago and now they've kind of come of age. McPherson three ball, good. It looks like those guys are eyeing that three up today. There's legendary coach Homer Drew has kind of developed this team. We mentioned very young a year ago. All their main players back. This Bots in the corner. Now they're gonna swing it. Dump it down in the Burroughs. Burroughs double teamed immediately. Ball on the floor. Coming up with it is Johnson. And Burroughs the follow, can't get it to go, but a foul called, he'll go to the line. Burrow looks pretty long out there, pretty, pretty long out there. Stretching out like that, that's a good follow up, good tip up. Way to be aggressive. Very big win span for the senior from the Bahamas. He's listed at 6'8". That foul going against Igbavoa down low will be good for IPFW to get Igbavoa into foul trouble. He, of course, one of their best players. Averaging eight points. They've only played one game, as have the Dons, as Burroughs gets one of two. I remember playing the uh, second half of that free throw was almost always the most difficult. And getting into the lane, trying to hit the runner, and does is Jake Diebler. Interesting, the Dons have been on defense three times and they haven't gotten, haven't gotten to stop yet. These guys are gonna have to step up and help each other out in the paint. Two closely contended games between these two teams a year ago. Valpo leads the series six to nothing, looking for a seven game sweep literally tonight. Jakari Johnson, three ball good. That shot is always there when you drive and kick. It's always there when you drive and kick. Well, we were talking before the game, Keon, that if the Dons are going to be successful this year, of course, you have the rebounding and the defense is always a mainstay for any team, but they got to hit from the outside. McPherson gets to the bucket and gets it to go. Again, as we stated earlier, it's so important that the guys clog up that middle, force guys to shoot that outside shot, even though they're making it right now. Here's Demetrius. Dribble drive, runner goes. Don's a quick little run, now down just two at 10 to eight. 16.46 left to go here in the first half from the Coliseum home opener for IPFW in their first year in the Summit League. And turnaround shot off glass and good for Sean Huff. That was a pretty shot. You know, it may sound comical and Guys on Valpo are making all the shots, but sometimes that's dangerous because guys sort of cool off uh, as the game goes along. Good hustle by Scott, good hustle. Ben Botts uh, missed that shot. He was four of five from behind the arc the other night in the uh, season opener against Wisconsin. Really sparked a run that saw the Dons go up by as many as 11 in the first half against the Badgers on their home floor. Fortunately, in the end, the size of the Big Ten Badgers ends up nipping the Dons as shooting and scoring is Samuel Hampa. But, uh, the Dons losing their opener 83 to 58 as a foul is called. And that foul is going to be on Samuel Hampa after 
nailing the shot on the other end to put his team up six. I tell you, somewhere between the beginning and the end of this game, we've got to get a stop. We've got to get a stop. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> All right, so this is Jakari Johnson at the line. Drop it in, the first of two. Jakari had two points in the opening game the other night. Pretty good crowd out here. We haven't gotten an official number on attendance, but not a bad crowd out here for the open. Here's McPherson. Ampa working on Scott. Now they dump it down into the big guy. Inkovo up and under, gets it to go. Time out, we will take it with them. Our score, 16 to 10, IPFW down six right now. Jewel Falco will be back after this. Instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Hi, I'm Russell Simmons. Today I want to talk to you about a very important subject, and it's cruelty to animals. Emmy was a victim of cruelty, and someone did something about it. Someone called the ASPCA and put an end to it, because Emmy can't talk. The fact is, animals are abused all over this country, and people sit by and do nothing. It's not slick, or fly, or cool, or none of that. It's just cruel. If you're aware of any animal abuse, go to ASPCA.org to find out what you can do. Now, make a difference. She can't do it for herself. Back inside the Memorial Coliseum, IPFW in a six-point hole right now. Early on in this game, we have 15.39 left to go here in the first half of the home opener. Tommy Shegler along with Keon Henderson. Keon, we got on a little bit late, didn't have a chance to talk a lot in the pregame. What do you feel like are the keys for this Don's team to come out of with a win here in their home opener tonight? Well, what's interesting, because I've been watching DeWitt and Hopper all day. DeWitt's one of our best players, one of our best scorers, but he also has the responsibility of guarding the best score for the, other, for the opposition. So DeWitt's going to have to find a way to be uh, explosive on both ends of the floor, and I think he'll do fine if he does that. Here is Hampa working on DeWitt. Fade away, he had to settle for it. Comes up with anything, nothing but air. Now DeWitt on the other end, wisely holds it up. He had Igbovolo right in his face. And putting it in, Jakari Johnson. Nice dribble drive on the baseline to put it in, to cut the lead down to four. Quick pass down low, turnaround shot off last, no good. And ball will go to IPFW. Got our first defensive stop. Those things have it for us. That was Jared Lloyd on the miss. He is fresh into the game here for Homer Drew. And Hanpa now coming out of the game and checking in for the first time tonight is Howard Little, a uh, freshman out of Illinois. So DeWitt may be able to get some things done now, not having to work as hard on the defensive end. Burroughs with it, here's Demetrius Johnson. Dumps it down into Burroughs. Working on Ingvavoa, he tried to flop, wouldn't go. Fouled on the shot, no good, but he will go to the line to shoot two Will Burroughs. When you have ball movement like that, the end result is always almost positive. Yeah, they moved it around pretty good there. And, you know, that's one thing about Burroughs is that he can handle it up top. Maybe doesn't have the threat to shoot, but but he can handle it with it with uh, with the ball in his hand. He can distribute the basketball as he drops in the three. The key of getting those guys open is they got to set good screens. I see Coach Fighter has him running some baseline routes, if you will, for lack of better terms. And who's ever at that bottom block has got to make sure they set a solid screen so that that shooter can be open coming off the baseline. Girls 
drops in both. So the Dons now within two and checking in. Fan favorite Zelko Egerich for the first time here in the home schedule of 07 08. Burroughs takes a seat. 14 minutes left to go here in the first half from the Coliseum. Dons down two, visiting Valpo. Good to see Avery in the game. He was here when I was here. Lloyd gets to the bucket around Jakari Johnson. No, no problem with our offense now. We've just got to stop somebody. You're telling me before the game that uh, you guys always played Valpo pretty close when you guys used to play them as well. It seems like this is kind of a nice little rivalry between two in-state schools. Well, if you think about it, there's a lot of Indiana in the house. We've got Coach Drew from Indiana. Coach Fife played in Indiana. So we've got a lot of Indiana blood here in the building. And absolutely, as Jakari Johnson called for a travel. So the ball will go back over to the Crusaders. So the key to winning any game is just recognizing that you are just as good as your opposition. And if they're better, you just got to scrap and get after it. Well, in this building a year ago, also basically the same game. It was the second game of the season when these two met here a year ago. And a charge called there to Witt Scott, the senior, picking up the charge. Great play. The Witt just stepped right in there, sacrificed his body, wasn't worried about himself. Great team basketball. Well, yeah, close close game here, early portion of the season last year as well. Don's had a lead in that game. They eventually fell by eight, but I can remember it being uh, a close battle throughout, and uh, you would expect the same thing tonight. This is Chris Perkins into the game for the first time tonight. And here's Demetrius Johnson working down low on McPherson. Goes baseline, couldn't get it to go. And I got cut off by the backboard there. Now Lloyd the other way. Lloyd seems to think he can get right around Johnson whenever he wants. Yeah, if you watch him, he just, he never goes sideways. He's up and down. He's north and south, never east and west. Demetrius looking to run. Lead pass up to Jakari. Back to Demetrius. Two-man game. Jakari into the lane. DeWitt Scott, you can't leave him open. Oh! Even though that missed, that's still a great shot by Scott. Just got to take what the defense gives you. Down low. Post move, pretty good one, left hand by Callum McLeod. He's the fill-in for Igbo Voa as he went to the bench, but the Dons quickly back down with a transition bucket. Been watching, the Dons are getting the ball up the court pretty swiftly. Nice move by Jakari there to beat everybody down. Zach Plackmeyer set to check in for the Dons the next dead ball. We are at 12 minutes left. Here in the first half, Don's down four to Valpo. Sean Huff working on Scott. Now Lloyd. McPherson, three ball, no good. Here comes DeWitt. Here's an opportunity for us to capitalize. Make sure we get some touches. Here's DeWitt again. Bang! Or maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, he's not going to miss from there twice in a row, that's for sure. And he cuts it to a one-point lead for Valpo here, almost at the midway point of the first half. Valpo set some pretty solid screens right around that, that paint area. There's Little, long two, no good. Weak side rebound comes down to Jakari. He gives off to Demetrius. Demetrius, of course, battled injuries as a walk by Z there. And we've reached another timeout on the floor. The Don starting to get together on the defensive end. And DeWitt Scott starting to hit on the offensive end. That is a good combo. We will be back. We will be back with the rest of the first half after this. Like most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I want the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> 
go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. What can dinosaur tracks teach us about those long extinct creatures? On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll discuss Professor Jim Farlow's recent trip to Spain to track those tracks. Do teachers teach differently from one country to another? Professor Jeff Nowak was in Macedonia this summer teaching teachers to teach. We'll talk to him about that experience and about the new NYSTEM program. And we'll talk with the campus coordinator of the United Way Fund Drive to find out more about where your contributions are going. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon. We're starting to come around on the offensive end, and more importantly, Keon, they started, they've started. they started to come around on the defensive end, forcing some bad shots. Yeah, forcing some bad shots. I'm looking at the statistics. Falcons shooting about 64% from the field. IPMW uh, is shooting about 60%. Both are shooting over 50 and 60, respectively, from the three-point strike. Both teams shooting well today. All right, so here's Brandon McPherson, the point man, gives off to Hampa. He's back in the game after a few minutes on the bench. And foul away from the ball, and that may be DeWitt Scott, his second personal. We stated that earlier. It's going to be tough for DeWitt to be able to stay level-headed and be able to be explosive to both ends of the floor, guarding one of the best players on the team in Hampa. Absolutely. All right, so here's Hoppe to inbound it. And he triggers, now they get it up top quickly, and McLeod has position on Z, and that's too easy. That's a long guy, he turned around, and it seemed like he threw it down instead of up. And McLeod uh, stands at 7-1 from New Zealand. And here's Perkins on the wing, hits Blackmire. Blackmire can't get it, but a nice offensive board by Z. And now Egerich the three. Ah, oh, can't hit. First three attempt on the home floor. He's had some memorable ones over the course of last season. This is Little with the ball, giving off. Now McLeod again. Uh, Egerich. I tell you what, McLeod may be seven, one foot the head, but when you had those arms, he's about nine feet. <laughs> yeah, he absolutely is. He is a big, long dude. All right, so he'll go to the line to shoot two. That foul was the first on Zelko. Take a look at the replay. Getting into the lane without a problem was Dabler and a nice bounce pass. And then Egerich just really had, had nothing to do with it. Yeah, that bounce pass is the only pass that works there. You yeah, throw a absolutely. chest pass, it's an interception automatically. Too many hands in there going around. All right, so McLeod gets one of two, and the lead now at the midway point of the first half, 23 to 19. A little light pressure, three quarters court, shown by Homer Drew. Good tackles by the Dons. If you saw what he did when he got trapped, he didn't try to pass out. He stepped right through those two guys. Now Drew's shown a, uh, a zone. See how the Don's offense does against the zone. Ben Bach tries to shoot over it. He hasn't been able to find the range in a couple of attempts tonight. Big Bavoa called for an offensive foul as he kind of got up and under the chin of Demetrius Johnson and kind of hooked him as they had that post entry pass. So foul called on the big fella. And that is three already against Igboboa. So that is great for the Dons. It'll be interesting to see how Botts does against Hopper. Uh, there's an eight inch difference there. We'll see if Hopper goes up and down and try to go over here. Now we mentioned early on, Botts you know, just a great debut the other night against Wisconsin. Four of five from behind the arc. And uh, they could really use his outside shooting to spark things from time to time. High screen. Another roll by Burroughs, never found him. Demetrius, jump ball they call. And it will stay with IPFW. Nine minutes to go in the first half from the Coliseum. Tommy Shegler along with Keon Henderson. The four point Crusader lead. A little bit of confusion here at the scorer's table. They're trying to decide whether or not to reset the shot clock. 
And some players will check in here for the Crusaders. McLeod going to come off. At this point, that's a good thing. Brian Bucci checks in for Homer Drew, as well as coming back into the game. Sean Huff, and the shot won't fall. Going to the line to shoot two with Burroughs. You know, Tom, I love, I love the aggressiveness of the Dons for those rebounds. You can tell Coach Fife uh, makes it essential for those guys to go up after the ball and to make sure they're boxing somebody out when that ball is released. Well, and, you know, when you look at the Dons roster, they need to have that tenacity if they're going to be successful. It's kind of like the David and Goliath syndrome. Just because you're smaller, you got to remember Giants do fall. Missed first free throw by Burroughs. It stays at a four-point Valpo advantage. And Jakari Johnson checks back in. Chris Perkins will take the seat. Really enjoy watching Jakari Johnson play. Very aggressive, very aggressive. When you have him and Demetrius, Burroughs misses both. Uh, him and Demetrius Johnson on the floor at the same time. You have two really aggressive guards that are going to push it. And... Uh, JJ seems to uh, be able to work well off the line. Uh, watching the, the Dons out there with uh, Johnson at the guard, kind of reminiscent of when uh, Phil Jackson used to put those teams together in Chicago and LA with their big guard out top. Yeah, absolutely. It's a little Scotty Pippen esque. Here comes Jakari flying up the floors. Another good defensive stop. Dons have really picked it up the last couple minutes on defense. I know Coach Fife. Gave him some words in that huddle. Jump stop, can't hit on the bunny was Jakari. Here come the Crusaders, Diebler. Crossover into the lane and foul gonna be called on Botts, I believe. A little bit of a reach on Ben Botts. You know, I think some fouls are good fouls though. I'd rather give a guy an opportunity to make it in another way from the line rather than just give him a two. I think it's a good choice by Botts to make sure that he doesn't get that shot off. Here is Diebler from the line. And first one no good. Been stuck on 23 to 19 for several minutes. And the second one is good for Diebler. Alpo comes out in the press, it looks like a 1 2 2. All right, here's Burroughs to Demetrius. Not a very aggressive press, just a little pressure to show some. Jakari short, as we've seen a number of the three attempts by the Dons tonight come up just a little bit short. Hampa. Oh, and a foul called. And we're going the other way. Is that going to go against Hampa? That charge called. He was a little out of control and timeout on the floor. 24 to 19. Don's down by five. We will return after this with the rest of the first half. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime. Lost sales. You're looking at $2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. Combine ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven-safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. Mm. So, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. Home opener here for IPFW at the Memorial Coliseum for the 07-08 season. They're down to Valpo right now at the 738 mark of the first half by five points. Tommy Shegler with Keon Henderson. Keon 
We've talked a lot about the size of the Dons and how they're kind of a smaller team. They need to be successful from the outside, and that means a lot of threes along the way. Yeah, they took 25 last game against Wisconsin, and I bet you Coach Drew, being as smart as he is, uh, you know, we have a tendency as basketball players to take the quick shot when the press is applied. Uh, and we saw that the Dons did that on the last two trips. We'll see if they'll be more patient with this opportunity with a 7.30 to go in the half. All right, run sets out of the uh, break and see what Coach Fife has come up with. They dump it down into Burroughs. Burroughs working on Bucci, gets around him no problem, can't hit the baby. Putback won't go. Here come the Crusaders. This is Diebler. Diebler on the wing. This is a nice little battle going on between Burroughs and Bucci, and he has the ball right now. Caught up underneath the hoop, but the reverse goes. Dons need a bucket. And foul called on the drive by Demetrius Johnson. If you want somebody to be aggressive, just throw it to Demetrius, because that guy's got no fear in him whatsoever. Jake Diebler called for the foul. Demetrius is a friend of mine. That guy, he's intense wherever he is. You see him at church, he's intense. You see him uh, just in a casual setting, he's intense. That's a serious guy. Another great uh, transfer for Coach Fife that he brought in here, senior out of Cleveland, Ohio. Looks like Diaz put on a little weight since the last time I saw him. They come tough out of Cleveland. <laughs> tough guys always come from Cleveland. All right, Lloyd here for the Crusaders. The other way, Diebler. Hampa, three on the way, good. I tell you, taking nothing away from our guys, Hampa's more technical player. Absolutely. He is a great player, and he has given the Crusaders an eight-point lead with 6.22 left in the first. And this is a problem the Dons had a lot last year. And they had it the other night against Wisconsin, frankly. Come out strong, keep it close as a hold is called away from the ball down low. And I think it's going to go against Bucci. Uh, but they've had trouble finishing halves, uh, but both the first and second half. And they, and they have these lulls, and they put themselves in holes by the time the second, uh, the second half starts. In a game of basketball, it's always hard to play catch up. One cliche any coach will always tell you it's not about how you start it's about how you finish and you've got to finish with the same intensity that you start the game with. And here's Burroughs from the line he's already been there several times tonight he's now four of seven from the stripe one interesting fact is as we look at the statistics Valpo has been right around 66 percent shooting the entire game is going from 60 down to 35, so we just need to get the ball in, better shot selections, try to get a few layups and get to the free throw line, get ourselves back in this. Chris Perkins is back into the game. Plackmeyer takes a seat on the bench. Three ball on the way for Huff is good. Nothing but net. Nine point lead. Burroughs, dump pass, down low to Demetrius, stolen away by Hampa. Here come the Crusaders the other way. Right now, Vapo's just being the aggressor. And there's Huff. Looks for a cutter now. Kicks it, wing to Bucci. Wow, he nails a three. Three straight threes for the Crusaders, and the lead is now 12. Looks like we need a timeout. And that's exactly what he gets. 35-23, 5.27 left to go in the first half. We'll be back with more IBFW basketball in a minute. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. 
and IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Back to live action here at the Coliseum. The Dons just with an over and back violation coming out of the timeout, but an air ball thrown up by Lloyd and a block called on Lloyd as he tried to draw the charge against Demetrius Johnson. That'll send Demetrius to the line for two. That's a double bonus. Got to get out and contest some of those shots and make those guys put the ball on the floor and do something besides sit and have target package at a three point all, all day long. Demetrius drops in the first and you know I'm 66% overall. Something that you want to get down as well, but 83 from behind the arc is staggering. You're doing anything almost seven times out of ten, you're doing pretty good. Demetrius drops in both, so it's now a 10-point lead. For Valpo, with five minutes left to go here in the first half, you'd like to see this cut in half if you're the Dons. McLeod and McPherson going to check in at the next dead ball. Here's Huff into the lane. Could have walked. Kicks to Bucci. That's going to be off. Another air ball. You can see the intensity and defense on the side based on the players. You can see that the Dons are really adamant about not allowing them to get anything they want. And look at the result. I think that Coach Fife might have had a few things to say in that last time out. <laughs> Pretty sure. If he's like any other coach in America, he has something to say. <laughs> okay, Don's with an opportunity here to cut into things. Ball deflected out of bounds by Diebler. It will stay with IPFW. Here is Botts. Botts to Jakari. Back up to Jakari after a swing to Demetrius. Down to working it on the outside, trying to get it down low. They do to Demetrius. He waits for the double team, kicks. Perkins can't get the jumper to go. Huff into the lane. Thought he was going to pull up there. He had an open look, but they're trying to get it down into McLeod. McLeod working on Egerich. That's a match that they won all day. Can't hit the hook, though. And here comes IPFW. Here is Jakari. And now Botts. Perkins baseline. Don's got lucky. He kicked out to Jakari because it went off of Z's hands. Wants to put it back out. Oh, and a charge called on Egret. Timeout on the floor. Don still down 10. 3.28 to go in the first half. Let's see if they can make a run when we come back. Everything you need, paper, pencils. We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. I can no longer make my mortgage payment. We won't be able to make our mortgage. I can't pay my mortgage right now. Life throws everyone lots of curves. Sometimes it's a loss of income or an expensive health emergency. If that happens to you, call the people expecting your payment and let them know. They'll want to work something out. So at the first sign of payment trouble, call. They can help, but only if they know you need help. To learn more, visit HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. That's HomeLoanLearningCenter.com. Don's down 10 points on the hands of some hot shooting by Valpo. 
here from behind the line. Late portions of the first half. And the Dons really need to make a run here in the last 3.28, Keon, if they want to try to get some momentum headed into the second half. Yeah, they really need to treat this last 3.25 uh, as if it's the last 3.25 of the game, not just the half. All right, they continue to battle with McLeod down low, and Coach Fife went to someone new coming out of the break. And that's Nick Luttrell, a uh, freshman from Nashville. He's 6'8". And uh, he tried to front there, coming out of the timeout, and they just tossed it right over to those big, long arms of McLeod. And McLeod's kind of like a skyscraper. You can just throw it up there, and while everybody else standing on the ground, he can go in the trees and get it. I heard a lot coming into this game about the talents of Igbavoa. Well, he's had to sit down with three early fouls, and you thought that, that was a break. Not so sure anymore as McLeod has come off the bench for seven points now. You know, Tom, I used to think that when I played, but I started to realize that it was college basketball and everybody was good, and anybody could be a superstar on any given night. Blackmire, three on the way is good. Those are the kinds of shots that we need. He was wide open, he took it, he didn't hesitate, he jumped, he followed through, excellent shot. Don's cut it to single digits at 37-28, just under the three minute mark here in the first half. You know, Hopper's been pretty quiet since uh, he's been guarded. Yeah, they've been mixing up who they've been throwing at him actually, and he has been quiet. Here's Botts, Rainbow won't go. Tried to get the runner on the baseline and just, that was a tough shot. The outstretched hands of Huff waiting there for him, trying to block that shot. He had to go way high with it. I'd like to see a better shot after being able to get a stop on the other end. Diebler, the turnaround, that's not a good shot. You know, I like Coach Fife's strategy about throwing multiple guys at Hopper. He doesn't know, he can't get used to who's guarding him, and so he can't get into a flow. I like that strategy. Here's Johnson on the wing. Plackmeyer, he just did a big shot. Gets it out to Burroughs. Young lineup on the floor right now for IPFW. Johnson, the spin, the hang, the bang. That's the way to go. Come back out. Don't look at the score, just put the ball in the hole. And timeout, Homer Drew needs to talk it over. 37 to 30 is our score. We're at the minute and 37 mark. And like you said, Keon really wanted to look when there was a minute 28 left to go in the first half. Like this was the last three minutes and uh, 28 seconds to go in the whole game. And it looks kind of like that's what the Dons have done. They've been able to cut into this lead. Well, if you look at the statistics again, when they're shooting 70%, we're down 10. Shooting percentage was down to 56%, and we're right back in the game. Absolutely, and uh, they played better defense. Some trouble with the matchup of the 7-1 McLeod down low at times, but uh, as we've mentioned a couple times now, they've been able to keep Hoppe in check, and that's been huge for them. Another guy that's uh, been very quiet is McPherson. He had 14 points in the opener, and uh, he has spent time on and off the bench throughout the first half. He's another one that picked up an early foul, but only one, so... Uh, it's hard to explain why he's been on the bench so much. He's been he's back in the game now for Coach Drew, and they need to continue to check him as they come out in a, in a uh, zone for the first time. This is that 1-3-1 one, one that Coach Fife stole from John Beeline, uh, and it worked well for them times last year. Well, I think that was a great adjustment. I mean, give them a different look. We're down seven points right now, and if you look at the statistics, the difference is in the paint. Uh, the Dons have got eight points in the paint. Crusaders will have 16. So uh, if we can kind of keep them outside, we buy time, uh, some time to get right back in this game. I believe the Dons are going to do some things in the second half that may surprise some people. McLeod, foul line jumper. You're not going to count on him hitting that that many times. You could see Valpo not ready for that 1-3-1. One, one. They were kind of backpedaling and trying to regroup that entire possession. I'm surprised they got points out of it. But when you're, when you're a well-coached team, you know, Coach Drew is probably taking them through situations in practice that got them ready for that. And they stepped back and took an, a, an assessment of what was going on. Bad turnover there by IPFW. Plackmeyer couldn't handle the pass. Tell you what, watching one guy away from the ball that's been kind of entertaining 
uh, so far in the first half has been Botts. Uh, he, he does not stop moving the entire time he is away from the ball. Just kind of reminds you of that uh, Allen Iverson guy over in Denver. Just <laughs> when is he going to slow down? And does he ever get tired? You just kind of get tired watching him move. Absolutely. And this could be the last possession of the first half. We have 22 seconds left to go in the half. Don's trying to cling to just being down in single digits here. They don't give up any points. Down to 10 seconds in the first half. Here's McPherson. Gives off. This is when you got to dig in. McLeod into the lane. Runner won't go. Rebound Johnson. And that will bring an end to the first half for IPFW. They are down nine at the half to Valpo. And the way that that half went offensively for most of the middle portion of the half to be down single digits isn't too bad. We're going to talk a lot about it here on the halftime show when we come back. Don's down nine at the break. I guess I'm like most kids. I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I want the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. You might be surprised to know the biggest dangers your pet faces are everyday dangers, like drinking from puddles, being boarded, squirrels in the park, and fleas and ticks. Being a pet is risky business. That's why it's important for every pet to receive a risk assessment and wellness exam twice a year. A risk assessment from your veterinary professionals helps create a unique risk profile for your dog or cat. Your veterinarian can then develop a disease protection plan that's right for your pet and the disease threats in your area. Best of all, twice a year exams help your veterinarian detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So reduce the risks. Contact your veterinarian today for your pet's wellness exam because being a pet is risky business. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. What can Dinosaur Tracks teach us about those long extinct creatures? On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll discuss Professor Jim Farlow's recent trip to Spain to track those tracks. Do teachers teach differently from one country to another? Professor Jeff Nowak was in Macedonia this summer teaching teachers to teach. We'll talk to him about that experience and about the new NYSTEM program. And we'll talk with the campus coordinator of the United Way Fund Drive to find out more about where your contributions are going. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close, Sundays at noon. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions? Eat your pizza, man. Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. We have reached halftime at Memorial Coliseum. Tommy Shegler along with Keon Henderson. 39 to 30 is our halftime score. The Dons really went through a slow spurt in the midway portions of this first half, Keon. And that's really where, where we find ourselves down at this point. They had trouble getting stops and they had trouble putting the ball in the hole. They had it at a two point game and then it was at a four point game for quite some time, but it kind of ballooned out when they hit the cold spot. You know, one of the things that's essential in basketball is distribution. You've got to be able to pass it, and you've got to be able to get something out of it. It always becomes dangerous when the opposition is passing the ball and the assists are piling up for them. And uh, as we look at our statistics, for every assist we have, we have two turnovers for that. So uh, it's going to be very difficult for us to, uh, to score when, when we have the ball and we put it back in their hands. So we're going to have to take care of the ball a little better this second half. Of course, you've heard coaches talk so many times about wanting to have that three to one ratio. We have two to one, but it's on the wrong side of things. <laughs> and uh, boy, you can't ask for anything more if you're Coach Drew and Valpo. Seven assists dished out by the Crusaders in the first half and no 
turnovers. And that says something to the defense that was being played, especially first 10 minutes of this ball game. Well, also what you see is, um, also you see the, um, the rebound situation. Right. And uh, if you look at it, they're not, there's only four offensive rebounds combined. Yeah, that's uh, interesting because we're going to take some looks at uh, the first half stat. This is, or uh, first half highlights. That's Hampa. And, you know, he was kept quiet for a good portion of the half. We mentioned he started throwing a lot of different people at him. He had eight points in the first half. That's McPherson dropping one in from the outside. He has also been quiet with five. Actually, Valpo really kind of getting things from some a little bit of unusual suspects. Uh, and you kind of say the same thing for IPFW. DeWitt Scott has been quiet. They've gotten some good minutes out of Jakari Johnson. He's got 11 points leading the way for IPFW. Burroughs and Bucci were a fun matchup to watch throughout the latter stages of the second half. That was Bucci winning that one with the reverse underneath on Burroughs. And then the three ball getting knocked down. And this is kind of when Valpo started taking over this game. They hit three straight threes in that one little spurt and went from a four-point game out to a 12-point game. And uh, these are the three threes. Bucci finishing it off. Nothing but net. And then the Dons really started to battle back. It ballooned down to as many as 12. They did battle back. Plackmeyer stepping up and dropping one in. This all in the last three minutes of the half. Jakari, the nice spin move, goes off glass, gets it to drop. They were able to cut it down to seven, and it ended up at nine. And this was when they came out of the timeout, and uh, Coach Dane Fife had the 1-3-1, one, one, but that big guy McLeod, just hurt us again. So we are at the half. A lot of different ceremonies going on. That's Dr. Wartell at uh, center court uh, with some different ceremonies going on at the half. And uh, we're going to take a break. We'll continue to come back, talk this thing, talk this thing over. 39-30, uh, Valpo up right now on IPFW at the half. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. glycerides or trays have to do to get noticed. Heart disease and stroke? Really? We should pay her more attention. Normal triglycerides are below 150. High triglycerides increase your risk of heart disease. And if you're a woman, that risk goes up even more. After standing in the shadows of good and bad cholesterol, triglyceride, also known as the forgotten fat, is ready to share the spotlight and the attention. Next time you have your cholesterol or blood fats tested, ask your doctor about the role triglycerides play in your heart health. Remember to ask your doctor about the good, the bad, and the forgotten fat. For more information on all of your blood fats, the good, the bad, and the forgotten, go to ForgottenFat.com. And remember, normal triglycerides are under 150. This message brought to you by Sister to Sister, working together for healthy hearts. What can dinosaur tracks teach us about those long extinct creatures? On this month's edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll discuss Professor Jim Farlow's recent trip to Spain to track those tracks. Do teachers teach differently from one country to another? Professor Jeff Nowak was in Macedonia this summer teaching teachers to teach. We'll talk to him about that experience and about the new NYSTEM program. And we'll talk with the campus coordinator of the United Way Fund Drive to find out more about where your contributions are going. Join me, Susan Alderman, for IPFW Up Close Sundays at noon. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Whoa.
University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back inside the Memorial Coliseum, halftime, you see the score there. IPFW down nine points at the break. Tommy Shegler along with Keon Henderson. And Keon, we talked a little bit at the beginning portions of the half about the different things that were jumping off of the uh, box score of the first half to us. We mentioned the assist to turnovers. Um, rebounding, you mentioned there's only been four offensive boards overall, but I'm kind of surprised the Dons are out rebounding Valpo. That's not something you're going to see very often in an IPFW game, and right now they have a two-point rebounding advantage. And it doesn't add up, it seems, uh, because Valpo's not really missing a lot of shots. Right. And so you, you, you wonder how those things are happening. But again, uh, I can tell that Coach Fife has taught this team about boxing out, going and finding a man before you find the ball, right? making sure you seal off some space in the paint, because most of the time, uh, long shots equal long rebounds. Well, and, uh, you know, you look over some of the other things that are going on on the floor, and you mentioned that it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I would say the only thing I can find on the on the stats that would tell me why that's happening is the turnovers. Uh, Valpo's gotten several more possessions out of the first half because they've had no turnovers compared to six for IPFW. So that right there gives uh, the Crusaders six more possessions than IPFW had in the uh, first half. But let's talk a little bit about the second half. I mean, the Don's definitely within striking distance. What do they have to do here, especially in the early portions of the second half, to be successful in this one? Well, well if you look at the thing uh, from this perspective, the Don's don't really have a lot of people who've gotten on the board. I mean, you've got uh, Jahar, Jakari Johnson with 11. You've got uh, Demetrius Johnson with 8. And then you've got a couple other players, one with 5 and a couple with 3. But if you look at Valparaiso, they've got at least... Uh, I'm looking at maybe nine to ten people who've gotten on the board. You've got right. two, five, eight, three, five, nine, two, and five. And so when you've got a lot of people sharing the load, uh, the Dons are going to have to get some of those guys on the bench to step up and carry some of this load. Absolutely. They definitely have got to get a little bit more balance. And a guy that's been completely silent except for one, three, really, DeWitt Scott. I mean, you got to get... DeWitt's, uh, DeWitt going because how he goes a lot of times this year is going to be how the Dons can go because really, I mean, we've, we've talked a little bit about it. You've got to be able to pull that defense out on the perimeter in order for the big guys that IBFW does have to be able to work down there because if it's if it's crowded down in the lane, Jerron Burroughs isn't going to be able to do a whole lot. Well, I guarantee you that in the scouting report, they said if we stop the whip, we've got a shot. Yep. And so what has to happen is there have to be some other guys who say, you know what, I'm a college athlete too. And if DeWitt's not going to score tonight, then I've got to take up the slack, uh, share his load between two people. If we do that, I think the Dons will be fine. I think that we've got that first half out of the way. I think that uh, they know that they can play with him. I'm, I'm sure that those jitters are over. One thing I recognize about being an athlete myself you're only nervous when you first step out there. Once that first shot goes up, then you kind of take a breath and say, all right, we're all equal here. We're all athletes. We're all men. Let's get it on. Well, it was a battle both times they played last year. It looks like it's shaping up to be a battle again tonight. Stick around for the second half. We're going to take our last break of half. When we come back, second half action here from the Coliseum.
Here we go with the second half. Moments away here from the Coliseum. Tommy Shegler along with Keon Henderson. And uh, we are bringing you the home opener of IPFW season. What is thought to be probably the most historic IPFW basketball season in the history of the school. Of course, their first season as a D1 school in a league. The Summit League will kick off with their action here in a few months. Right now, we have a warm-up action with a little bit of out-of-conference games. And right at the top of that list on the mind of Dane Fife right now is how to beat the Valpo Crusaders. IPFW has lost the first six matchups of time, the times that they have met up with Valpo on the hardwood. And uh, IPFW trying to break that string tonight. They're down nine as we get ready to start the second half. I think mo co most coaches will agree that basketball games are broken up into five-minute segments. Let's see what the uh, Dons will do in the first five minutes of the second half. Igba Voa, it's the first time we've seen him back in the game for a long time after the three fouls in the first half. And he's working on Egerich. And I believe that they're going to call a foul on Z for a hold. I don't know about that one, but uh, the referee's out there in the stripes. Little ticky-tack, and that's going to be the third on Egerich. So to inbound the ball will be Huff. He inbounds it, then gets it handed off back to him, goes right around Z. That's just too easy, but he misses the easy shot in the lane. Demetrius running the other way. I'll tell you, Tom, nothing ever good comes out of allowing anybody, whether it's a guard or a big man, to get in the middle. Absolutely, and that was just too easy that time. Burrows the pump fake and then couldn't hit when he went up with it. Coach Fife wanted a foul call on that one. Diebler in between the rings, looks it over, kicks left side to McPherson. He's somebody that the Dons have kept in check. Travel. Traveling is right. Go the other way. So that's the first turnover for Valpo. Game. <laughs> <laughs> Not of the second half, people. But a good sign nonetheless. Mistakes being made by the Crusaders. That's something the Dons are going to have to have happen if they want to get back in this thing. Burroughs working on Igbavoa on the block. Kick out to Demetrius. They work the two-man game. He's got to be careful not to be called for three seconds down there. Oh, and a charge called on Burroughs, dropping the shoulder. But I tell you, one thing we're not having a problem with is being physical at the beginning of the second half. We've got two quick fouls, and we've got to be careful with that because we need them going down the stretch. Second foul on Burroughs. Can't have him get in foul trouble pretty much all year. <laughs> we need him in the middle. All right, so here's McPherson bringing the ball up for Valpo. Still no scoring so far in the second half. We're a little over a minute in. Don's still down nine. Huff trying to change all that. Line drive shot won't go. Here come the Dons the other way. Demetrius, outlet to Jakari. Up the floor, spin move, no good. Burrow's offensive board. He goes up strong and puts it in. You know, I'm pretty excited about how the Dons have come out this second half. Really aggressive on both ends of the floor, but they've got to get back. McPherson from the corner. No. Fight for the board. Going to go off Huff and over to IBFW. You think Coach Five got after him? <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. All right, so the Dons down seven now, can cut it to five with two. Mentioned that first five minutes in the first two, they've looked very good. Here, here's Egerich down low to Burroughs, double team came right away. DeWitt gets into the lane, elbow jumper, good. One of the greatest shots in basketball, one dribble, two dribble, pull up. Yeah, it was a charge and all of that. Good to see that he didn't, you know, didn't force up the three. Got the defender in the air, went around. Nice, patient move by the senior. And a turnover again. They throw it away down low. Demetrius going to attack. You know he will. Down the middle. Blocked by Huff. Battle for it. And it's going to stay with IPFW. And he had an open man on the wing, but can't fault Demetrius. He's a bulldog. Maybe Demetrius thought that his calling was point guard. I mean, he took that thing from <laughs> coast to coast. I'm telling you, he, he just attacks. And uh, it's fun to watch, but 
Sometimes you need to slow down a little bit. DeWitt, basically the same jumper as before, and now the senior's starting to get going, and all of a sudden, IPFW down just three. One Time of my out. favorite shots in basketball. One dribble, two dribble, pull up. It is working for DeWitt Scott. And we will take a break. When we come back, we'll see if the Dons can pull in front of Valpo. We'll be right back. IPFW trying to stun the Valpo Crusaders here on a November night. Down just three, they were down nine at the half and a quick 6-0 run to start the second. Be interesting to see how the Dons will make a stop or not here on this defensive possession. All right, so here's McPherson in between the rings. Goes right side to Diebler. Bet you they try to dump it down low and work some kind of high-low. Igbavo working on Z and foul away from the ball. And he better watch it because he did not like that foul call one bit. That is his fourth. That referee did not like his reaction to the call either. Yeah, he came dangerously close to get the tee there. The Dons kept their hands high the entire time. Their hands never went below the waist. That's the way you play good sound defense. All right, so four fouls on Igbavoa, and the Dons could tie this game with a three. Here at the 17 minute mark, Scott trying to do it, can't get it to go. And uh, Coach Homer Drew going really big right now with McLeod and Igbavoa out there at the same time. Needs Z and Burroughs to step it up down low, and that's exactly what Egrick is doing right now. Cuts off the baseline beautifully and gets the board. Outlets to Demetrius, and now they're going to run. Nice cross-court pass to Jakari to Burroughs. Oh, he can't handle it. Now got to get back. McPherson loses it going into the lane. Another turnover. Coach Drew up off the bench. He really upset with the referees right now. Tommy, we talked about this earlier. The referees always favor the aggressive. The more aggressive you are, the more calls you'll receive. Bad pass by Zelko right there as it goes out of bounds. And the Dons are only going to get so many opportunities. They have the momentum right now. You can see the frustration on Dane Fife's face. They have the momentum right now. they got to capitalize and try to at least even this game up. Well, basketball is a game of runs. And when it's your turn to run, you've got to capitalize. You can't have a lot of turnovers during your run. 16 minutes left to go in this game. Who's going to make the next run? Will the Dons continue or will Valpo start to pull back away from IPFW? McLeod on the block, spins under the hoop. Reverse won't go, fight for the ball. The Dons are getting to every loose ball. Valpo's shooting percentage coming down right about that 45%. And look at the score. We're right back in it. Shooting percentages are so important. Diebler steals Good it hustle. momentarily. Ball on the floor, leaves it for Huff. He throws it down in the foul. Ooh. Not only threw it down, but threw it down hard. <laughs> Man, that was a big play. I think we're in for a barn burner. These guys are about to get fired up. Yeah, it is going to be fun to watch the last 15 minutes and 42 seconds of this game. Don's down five when we come back.
able to come back and win this game. You might point to this play right here as the key of the game. Diebler, a beautiful bounce pass after the steal, and Huff throwing it down with authority. That stretched the lead out to five for Valpo right now, and Huff trying to complete the old-fashioned three-point play, and does so, and gets it back out to six. Tommy Shegler along with Keon Henderson. 15.42 left to go in this ball game. IPFW down 42 to 36. Thomas, time for the Dons to adjust now. They have their run. Now Valpo's going to try to get one. Got to play solid defense during this next five-minute second. Now we're coming up on that second five-minute part that you're talking about, and here comes DeWitt. Nice pass, but he's double-teamed. Burrows immediately went under the hoop and found an open spot. Nice display of athleticism. Now he is a fun player to watch. He can move long. Only downside is that he is a little skinny, and when he really goes up against the team, he's got some meat down there. That's going to be hard. Diebler trying to answer and rattles in a three. That hurt. It seemed like Diebler had that on his mind the entire time. 45-38 is your score. Demetrius into the lane, gets it to Burroughs, and that was an easy bucket. Now we got to be careful. We can't trade basketball with him. Somebody's got to stop somebody, and I hope the Dons are the ones who do it. Here comes Huff. Gets it to McPherson, top of the key. Now Diebler working. Ball is blocked, and here comes Jakari. Jakari. Fouled as he went to the bucket. Looked like he was going to get ready to pass that over to Burroughs. McPherson probably a good foul there for Valpo. Yeah, as I stated earlier, there's some fouls that are good fouls. And when you're going to give somebody an easy two, you foul them, coaches tell you, send them to the line, let them earn it. Absolutely. Well, that one just the second team foul. Really, we haven't had many fouls at all on either side over the first five minutes and 30 seconds of the second half. Only Three team fouls on IPFW, two on Valpo so far. Lloyd back in the game as McPherson will take a seat. And uh, Coach Drew likes to really keep a strong rotation going, keep everybody fresh. Runs a lot of players in and out. DeWitt had nine points against uh, Wisconsin. He's got about seven now. Uh, right on his average for the year. Here's Demetrius, lost the handle on things and a foul call. The Dons might have gotten a break there. Valpo seems to be pretty frustrated with the way calls are going right now. Hey, got to get some breaks along the way. Coach Drew kind of reminiscent of uh, Phil Jackson standing up with his hands on his hips. Looking pretty frustrated. That was the second on Jared Lloyd. Nick Bavoa really the only player on either side in foul trouble right now. Bot swings it. Demetrius baseline, hangs over Bucci, can't get it to go. Would have been a good time for that, that dribble pull up that the Witt has shown us a couple times. Yeah, he went a little too far in that time. Lloyd in the corner, top of the circle to Diebler. Diebler spinning in the lane, and foul going to be called. Yeah, it looks like he got it. That one's going to go against Botts. Freshman after the great debut against Wisconsin. Really been kind of quiet here tonight so far. No points. He is over three from the field. As uh, Demetrius Johnson going to take a seat. And uh, Blackmire will come back into the game. Little will shuffle in for Valpo as Hampa comes out. And he continues to be somewhat quiet here. Yeah, he's, he's pretty quiet. And it's good news for us. Five-point game, 13-34 left to go in this one. Been close throughout. IPFW has come as close as three. There's Lloyd. Pretty good defense by the Dons, nice help. Great rotation that time. They still have him on the run. Finally found the open man, what patience. Whoa. That was a beautiful offensive set. That ball touched nothing but the bottom of the net. Howard Little dropping it in. 48 to 30, Don's down eight once again. Zelko, the Burroughs, 15 footer long. Here's that dangerous portion that I was talking about, that five minute segment, 
It's a game of runs. Valpo's taking that run right now and seems like we got a foul here. Now that's Lloyd drawing the foul. And uh, Coach Fife needs to stop the bleeding to this as quickly as possible. Blackmeyer picks up the foul. Lloyd's at the free throw line. Looked like he came straight from the gridiron right to the free throw line. That guy's arms are ripped. <laughs> Student section giving Lloyd some business, and they were successful there. First one pretty strong off the back line. All right, second attempt on its way and in. Back out to 10 points. And there's Lloyd getting into the lane and drawing that foul. Got to get some guards to come up and get the ball out of the big man's hand. That's exactly what the press is designed to do. It's designed to put the ball in the hands of people who are not used to handling it. Now here's a guy that is used to it with DeWitt. Now the lob down low to Burroughs. In trouble corralling, now does. Goes, powers in on Bucci and gets it to go. 49-42. Don's down seven. They need to string together two straight possessions. Scoring with nothing. Coming the way of Valpo on the other end. Burroughs, Burroughs leads all scores with 13 points for both the Dons and the Crusaders. He's come on strong in the second half. Diebler comes up empty, and here come the Dons. Plackmire to Botts. Botts to Scott. He gets to the foul line. Z, three on the way. No good. Here comes Lloyd. Got to get back on D. Lloyd's got that crossover working, man. He's going right around Plackmire and Bots every time. Timeout on the floor. Don's down seven. Looking to make a run when we come back. Back inside the Memorial Coliseum, 11 minutes, 40 seconds left to go in this game. The Dons have been as close as three here in the second half. Right now, they're in the midst of trying to weather the storm of a Crusader run. And they have gotten it back down to seven. As we join live action back down on the court. It'll be Valpo's ball here. Dane Fife coming out of the timeout with a lineup of Egerick, Burroughs, Botts, Jakari Johnson, and Demetrius Johnson. And Homer Drew runs a beautiful set out of the timeout. Comes away with an easy layup on the weak side from Lloyd. Now here's Demetrius. Botts comes off the screen. Zelko. Dimes need a bucket right here. Yeah, that's the time to get one. Double team, they've been going to Burroughs a lot. And a foul called down low on Bucci. Hey, Burroughs is hot. The guy's got 13 points. He's shooting 50% from the field. He's made five of eight from the uh, free throw line. He's got four rebounds and assists. Uh, he's playing an all around good game. He only has two fouls, which means he's got about three to use. <laughs> Uh, a foul called right off of the inbounds play. I think that one is going to go against Howard Little. This may come down to who does better from the free throw line. One more 
team foul against the Dons, and the, they will put Valpo into the bonus, and two more for Valpo, and they'll put Dons in the bonus. Bots can't hit on the three, and man, he has not been able to find the range tonight. One thing, one thing you always tell shooters that uh, if you're a shooter, you just keep shooting. Lloyd doing just that, dropping one in, and uh, back up to the biggest lead of the ball game right now for Valpo at 12. Don's Shikari loses the ball out, but they say that Valpo touched it last, so it'll stay with IPFW. You know, when I play here uh, from 99 to 04, this is very reminiscent of what would happen when we would play Division I schools. We would compete with them, but there would just be those spurts where it seemed that they were superior, uh, whether that would be five minutes or seven minutes, and that those few minutes would just change the entire game. All right. Well. Don's still trying to prove that they belong, and if they want to prove it in this game, they got to answer, and Burroughs continues to be money down low. Oh, he's the best weapon IPFW has right now. The Don's really need him to continue to continue to keep it going while somebody else steps up. There's Lloyd. Now McPherson to Huff, and traveling called on Huff. I was just thinking about uh, the situation with Botts, this is his first game in the Coliseum, and I've heard a number of different IPFW players that have told me over the last couple of years that this gym and, and this building can be deceiving with, with the way the things look. So, and, and it's unfortunate IPFW has a situation where they don't get to practice in this building that often. We'll see over at the Gate Center, uh, a few feet behind the rims, there's a brick wall. Yeah. And it kind of throws off the depth perception when you have a wall five feet behind the rim at the gate center, then you come to the Coliseum, and the nearest seat is 100 feet. Right, <laughs> exactly. So it's kind of a depth perception type thing. And that foul went against Bucci down low. So he held Egerich, and now Igbavoa and Bucci both have four. So they're really going to be forced to go to the cloud exclusively if this continues. Well, the Dons are going to have to uh, continue to play hard because I don't know if there's ever, thing, uh, ever a thing called home court advantage for them because they only get to play here when the other guys get to play here. Right. Yeah, there's not a lot of home court advantage. And a foul on the floor on McPherson, and that's going to put the Dons into the bonus. So, good place to be. Coach Fife can now tell him in the huddle, listen, some of our threes may not be falling because we're only shooting 27%. Go in there, uh, get some fouls because we're shooting almost 80% from the free throw line. So it's a it's a better win for us. And Demetrius is four for four tonight from the line. So he has definitely contributed to that 80%. Just as I say that, he almost throws up an air ball on the front end. Needing to stop, 10 point game, 9.33 left to go in the game. Foul away from the ball. Goes on Egger. Whistle seems to be blowing a lot here. Very quickly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that one may have been a makeup especially. <laughs> Fearson takes a seat on the bench. Diebler back in. Tell you what, as you see Coach Drew, this is an impressive group of players that he's got. He's very deep. I mean, he can shuffle these guys in and out. It's, I think Boa throws up an air ball. But uh, I remember recalling this exact same thing uh, last year. They're young and they're deep. Coach Drew is no stranger to coaching. That's no absolutely. stranger to developing players. Just ask Hassan Bryce. <laughs> exactly. 19 years at Valpo. He's, the, uh, he's one of the longest tenure head coaches in the country. And timeout, 32nd timeout for Dane Five. He didn't like what he saw over on the offensive end. Coach Drew, uh, he can coach a little bit, you mentioned, ranked ninth among active D1 coaches in career victories. So there's the story with Coach Drew. That's what Coach Fife is up against. And for tickets to IBF, uh, uh, IBFW, I should say, I want to remind everybody, please call 481-6000 or go to IPFW Athletics website at GoMastodons.com. That's 260-481-6000 or online at GoMastodons.com. Once again, 10-point game 
9.13 left to go in this one. Probably a wise time out there, Keon, by Coach Fife because he needs to get some efficiency out of these offensive possessions. Yeah, they're going to keep coming, but uh, we've got to be efficient, as you said. We've got to make sure that we're putting them in the hole more than we're putting it back in their hands. All right, here's the set. Three from Jakari is in. All right, so that was a nice open look. Cut it to seven. Now I got to play some D. Crowd back in it a bit. Kind of feel that momentum switching a little bit. Three, and just like that, it may end. I mean, those are the type of shots that can kill a spurt by one team. And just like that, the arena goes silent. And a three dropped in by Howard Little. Don's need to answer. Z to the rack. <laughs> the big fellow, the left-handed finger roll. We'll take him any way we can get him. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but it counts for two. All right, eight points. Oh, Demetrius almost had the steal. Little into the lane. Found Eric Boa. Can't hit the easy lay-in. Dons need to be efficient. Need to get a good shot. Don't have to be in a hurry. If they want to pass it around, they could. Oh, Diebler comes away with a great steal. Layup on the other end. Second big steal he's made. Okay, these Crusaders will not go away. Ten-point lead for Valpo with eight minutes to go in the ball game. High screen set by Z. Now Scott looking for Burroughs. A little bit deeper, a little bit further out than he would like. Downs are doing a little bit of a standing. We've got to move around. Egerich to three. No, won't go. Diebler giving off to Lloyd the other way. This is one of those possessions where you feel like the Dons need a stop and they might be in trouble in this game. And that one is going to go against Egerich. Down low working on Igbavoa and a technical foul called on the reaction by Zelko Egerich. We're try I'm trying to actually listen to what the refs are talking about here at the scorer's table. He got called for the personal foul working on Igbavoa down low and then he pulled his shirt out. It was tucked in, he pulled his shirt out and technical foul came quickly after that. It was 7.22 and down 10. Uh, that might have been the mental error that eliminated any chance of IPFW winning this game. The referees don't like to be showed up. That's true. It also uh, shows Egerich the door because he now has five fouls. So he finishes up his night with two points and five boards. And Valpo's going to get four th free throws here because uh, they are in the bonus. So they'll get a one of one and then they'll get two technical fouls and then they'll get the ball. Time out on the floor. We're going to try to sort this whole thing out when we come back. Valpo is going to be at the foul line for what looks like maybe a half hour. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Diebler at the line, hits on the first. No time, some mental errors. 
can just absolutely kill your hopes of getting back in the game. And to have a technical foul with two free throws and to get the ball back and to be down 12, that's a bad mix for the Donnells. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Diebler knocks in the first, which were the two technicals. And now Igbavoa will go to the line to shoot one and one. Air ball is last one. We'll hope we'll do again. And drops this one in. Taylor, two shots. One doesn't touch the rim. <laughs> the other one doesn't touch the rim. <laughs> All right, Iqbal, second one, good. All right, so now it's a 14-point game. This is the biggest lead of the game for Valpo and a reach in gonna be called that's on little and that's his second on the night we could be here for a while Keon because whole teams well into the bonus now and and uh, the whistles have definitely come out of the pockets of the refs here in the second half I could probably speak for the coaches coach Drew doesn't want the clock to stop <laughs> Coach Fife would like it to stop as often as possible. Now Burroughs missed the front end of his one-on-one. That's -on -one. Boa, the Hampa. Good Scott's done a great job along with others on Hampa all night. Iqbaboa turns, faces, now gets into the lane. Burroughs, just great defense. This is great Excellent defense. defense. Excellent defense. Straight up the whole way, got a partial. Valpo wants something, but there was nothing there. No, there was nothing there. If anything, Igbo was out of control going into the lane. Uh, it will stay with Valpo, however. And this is Diebler. On the back. Six seconds to go on the shot clock. Igbo is strong Excellent to the foul. rack. Excellent foul. You don't give anybody anything. <laughs> Ball jammed up in between the backboard and the rim. But you're right, that was a good foul. You can imagine the force that was created by those two guys Absolutely. over 250 just hitting each other like that. <laughs> yeah, Burroughs is a fun player to watch. He's another one not going to be backed down or not going to back down from any challenge or any competition, not intimidated by the big stage whatsoever. Igbavoa after that uh, air ball, minute to go. Now three for three since then from the line. And I successfully jinxed him, but unfortunately, Burroughs stepped on the line trying to save it from going out of bounds, so it's going to stay with Valpo. Jerron has given it all. He's given it his all on both ends of the floor. He is playing excellent ball this evening. 15-point game. Here's Hampa. And another foul away from the ball. Trying to fight through a screen. And they're gonna get DeWitt Scott trying to fight through that screen out on the perimeter. I'll tell you, at this rate, some of these guys will be uh, one grade higher before this game is over if these <laughs> wishes keep blowing. 6.41 to go. Valpo trying to extend the lead out to 15. And he does so. Igbavoy is not phased by that air ball one bit. He's making it. And he's got the uh, the homecoming crowd right here. The student section right, right behind the basket, giving him a hard time, but he drains both of those in nonetheless. All right, here's Burroughs. Not sure if that's exactly the role we want him to have. Kick ball by the defense. That's what you were saying earlier, Keon, with the press. It just it puts the ball in the hands of the people you don't really want handling. Here's Demetrius. Dallas just having trouble getting anything going. Bots up top working on Lloyd. Dimitri, it's six on the shot clock, gets in the lane, double clutch shot, good. Got one of those five minute segments left. 
Hopefully this one will belong to the Dons. Yeah, it's 15 point lead. A lot to make up in the last five minutes and change. But you know what you do at this portion of the game if you're a coach, you're telling them, listen, don't give up. This game is still winnable. Crazier things have happened. Uh, and, and, and what you want to do is you want to build a sense of urgency in your team that they play the same way whether they're up or whether they're down. Boyd gets into the lane. Block shot by Burroughs. The big mitts come up, fight for the ball, and jump ball finally called. And it's going to go over to the Dons. Tell you, not bad hustle. That ball means something. It's dangerously close to a goaltend by uh, Burroughs, but as we take a look at it here, actually, I guess it was still well on its way up. That long wingspan there by Burroughs. He gets it inbounds, a little bit of trouble. It's amazing, it's amazing to see uh, Demetrius handling that ball, bringing it up like that. It does kind of remind you of Scotty Pippen. He's got a lot of Scotty Pippen in his game. Ben Botts. 15 on the shot clock. Nice pass down low to Burroughs. Burroughs working on a smaller little and foul on the floor so Rose will go to the line but you see how all five players just kind of went to Burroughs like a magnet they all surrounded him wouldn't let them let him get the ball up even if he wanted to they were going to make sure that he was either going to get fouled or they were going to get a hand on the ball and steal it uh, Burroughs can't get it to go by the way, Keon, I know it's been a few years since you've been playing, but did you notice the new Mastodon over there? Brand new Mastodon uniform mascot this year. Didn't notice it, but I know the one we had when uh, when I was here, he was brown and- uh, Kind of struggling. Struggling, couldn't tell if it was a female or male with that dunk right there. Oh. I mean, he just threw it down. He threw it down, that was Howard Little. Yep, with Little. Two-hand slam right on the- Baseline. He's had a great second half, and uh, this game really kind of getting out of hand now. 17-point game with 4:28 left to go as the Dons going to turn it back over again to Valpo and Coach Fife going to take a timeout, a 30-second timeout as uh, he's seen his team go down by 17. Here's here's the new. I wish we had a telestrator so we could really draw in the new things. But you'll notice a nice new trunk, the 08 model right there, tusks all pristine and of course I think because of homecoming he's got the nice dinner jacket on he's got a nice Versace jacket on with his yeah, blue dyed top he's kind of pimped out he's got a little uh, James Bond going on tonight the feet are a lot bigger than I remember <laughs> yeah they're, they're new and improved uh, hooves or, or whatever you want to call them well, I know uh, I knew who our mascot was when we were in college and uh, we, we used to play a joke on, on him all the time because when he got hot, he would often take his head off. And we would tell him, nobody is supposed to know who you are. <laughs> uh, as they just unveiled that new, uh, the new Mastodon for the uh, inaugural season here in the Summit League. And there will be better nights for the Dons than tonight. Uh, as, you know, I, I can already hear the coaches after this game talking about the process of learning how to win and learning how to finish. It's got to be frustrating at times. Uh, and, you know, I've had conversations with them where, you know, you're trying to encourage and, and pick up, pick them up because there is improvement, but but it is hard not to notice the 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 same thing as Little got, or Lloyd got into the lane and was out of control, got called for the charge. But, um, you know, you see the same script being played out time and time again of, them coming out with fire and intensity and then just kind of running out of gas at the uh, latter stages of each half. Tom, you hit the nail right on the head. There is a process and you have to learn it in winning. Winning doesn't just happen. Losing does, <laughs> but you have to know how to win. Well, another lesson tonight learned. Jakari short on the jumper. And one of those lessons is, is when you're down this much and going late in the game, the last thing you want to do is take a quick shot uh, so that it looks worse than it really was. This is where you work on your fundamentals. When Howard Little had that dunk a few moments ago, you kind of get the idea that he was upset about that jump ball that happened a few seconds before that. 
Lloyd can't find the range on the three. Here comes Demetrius the other way. Kick out, Botts. He throws it out to DeWitt. DeWitt hangs and bangs in the lane. He really has that one, two dribble pull up shot down pat. Three minute mark, 15 point game. Timeout for Coach Drew. Full timeout on the floor. 68 to 53, and we will be right back. IPFW down 15 late in the game here. 3.08 left to go in the home opener against Valpo. And uh, as we look at some of the highlights, this, of course, DeWitt Scott getting into the lane. And there's that beautiful medium range jumper that, that you've enjoyed from DeWitt several times tonight. But uh, we were just talking during the break about that timeout that Coach Drew just called and some of the messages that might be behind it. Well, yeah, with three minutes to go, uh, the IPFW fan is saying why. But Coach Drew is sending a message that if I'm going to coach with three minutes left, you better play with three minutes left. And even though we're up big, don't you play like it. You play like the score zero zero. Yeah, exactly right. And we have uh, another quick timeout on the floor after a couple quick turnovers and an official timeout on the floor. We're going to keep it right here. Let's talk a little bit more about Coach Drew. Um, and we mentioned a couple things. 19th season at Valpo, um, ninth among active Division I coaches in career victories. He has uh, 571 career victories. Um, that places him 37th on the all-time on the all-time coaches list with at least 10 years of Division I coaching experience. 29 wins shy of 600. Um, he would become the 29th Division I head coach to uh, reach that milestone. And there's no doubt about whether he's going to get there. It's just when he's going to get there at this point. He kind of reminds me, kind of reminds me of a Jerry Salone out of Utah. Just kind of solid, but in the same place and still working at it. Well, the latest Mastodon scores and stats are available on the World Wide Web at GoMastodon.com. Check up on the teams, the players, order tickets if you want. The official Mastodon Athletics website, GoMastodon.com. I go on it frequently. It's an awesome site. Rudy Jovich has done a fantastic job with it. Easy and fun to play with. Always a good time. GoMastodon.com. Uh, all right, we're going to get back to uh, live action here. 3.02 left to go in this game, 68 to 53 and really everything done in this one. Oh, and a travel call that one gonna go against Michael Rogers and everyone wrapped everything wrapped up in this one basically except for the final score but you would like to see if you coach Fife some some uh, Good things out of your guys in a spot where they know they're probably going to go down, but they continue to fight down the stretch here. Well, yeah, Coach Fife is no longer coaching for today's game. I believe he's coaching for the future, letting guys know uh, this won't be the last time we're down, and we still got to play hard even when the score is lopsided. 
That was DeWitt Scott underneath coming down with the rebound and drawing the foul. Demetrius got everything but the bottom of the net with that three attempt. Rattled all around, finally out. Got to be thinking what Coach Fife is thinking right now. I mean, with the guys just getting into a league and uh, a lot of excitement in the air. Got to be thinking. Here's that last play. Demetrius getting it, and the senior continuing to fight down low. Dropping in the free throws. Yeah, I think it's an exciting time for this program we mentioned earlier in the broadcast. Uh, probably the most anticipated season in the history of the school. Uh, it's, a, it's just such a monumental thing to, to finally make it to that goal that the school had been working towards all the way back when they made the, the jump back when uh, when you were playing. So, I mean, it, it's, it was a long process and it was a hard process for a lot of guys, but uh, um, I'm sure as a former player, you can look out and be be awfully proud of what, what has come through and what, what has ended up here program-wise. And uh, think about all the blood, sweat, and tears that you put into it as well. Well, it's exciting to see. And uh, you know, I was a part of the first Division I team who played the first Division I game here, who played the first game at the Coliseum. Had a lot of firsts, and it was a historic year. But I think that what they're doing today is probably a little more historic than what I was a part of. And I still have uh, the basketball from the first Division I team where all of us signed it. I've got it in my office now. And uh, some of those guys are going on to play professional ball, and some of these guys are going to go on and play professional ball. And it's a learning process. And, you know, I implement some of the things that I learned here. We struggled as a basketball club, and you know, it's it's uh, it's developed a, a fight in me. You know, to wake up every day and continue to go to work at what I do, and to continue to build a life because of some of the struggles we've had here. I persevered, and it, it helped me build some character. What do you see as the the future? I mean, if you could look into your uh, crystal ball and, and kind of think about the the most optimistic outcome. Not for just this year, but, but where the program is going. I mean, where would you say IPFW can, can rise to? Uh, I believe that IPFW can do some of the things that we saw uh, some of the mid-majors do. Uh, some of the Kent States of the world and uh, some of the Toledos of the world and different schools, George Mason. I believe uh, even Chicago State has made a rise in the name for itself. And IPU, IUPUI in Indianapolis. I believe we can do some things like that uh, here in Fort Wayne and with Coach Fife having such uh, excellent basketball IQ and DNA and structure, I believe that uh, he'll be able to do some things for this program that will blow the minds of Fort Wayne. Possibly what? even sending some of his players to the Mad Ants. What do you think? Uh, what do you think? And I, I agree with you. I mean, I think that that when it comes to to those types of goals, those are definitely attainable goals for this program. I guess I question. Um, what the timetable is for those goals to be able to be completed because you know obviously it's still a working process in process and uh, and it should be interesting to see how long it takes for something like that to come to fruition. Yeah, I've heard this said before that the Chinese have a theory that it takes about 25 years for any organization to become solid and structured. All right, 14 point game. We're under two minutes now as uh, the Winscott drops it in. But yeah, no, I mean, that, that is a good point. And, and you can't be too impatient. I mean, we live in a world that's very impatient these days and it takes a little while for it to, to come together and you just have to, to wait and see what, what will come about. But uh, man, this is an exciting time for the program no matter what the outcome. Uh, out here tonight will be. I think that uh, as the schedules get tougher, one of the, uh, the goals that IPFW could look at in the short term is making sure they have uh, some consistency and, and some uh, 500 or above seasons. I think that's a great point, a great place to start, right? To try to get above the 500 mark. And then we can talk about some uh, conference championships. And, you know, if we win that, then you get that automatic berth into the national thing. And who knows what you can do once you get there. Right. Now there's Jakari Johnson with a nice finger roll. And I cut it to a 10-point game, but another quick whistle. 
Coach Fife not enjoying these uh, the these calls late in the game, and in fact was just warned by the ref to maybe pipe down just a bit. So just over a minute remaining in this game. 71-61. Valpo gonna walk out of here with a win. It'll be a perfect 7-0 against the Dons all time. Rogers misses on the first. And empty on the second as well. Chikari, three ball on the way, short once again. That has been a case more often than not tonight. Diebler lead pass to Bucci. Bucci fouled and one. I tell you one thing, Coach Drew has not done, and it's a testament to the Dons. He still got some of his horses in there. He's got some of his best players in there, which means he knows that uh, the Dons have an opportunity to strike back, or had an opportunity, I should say, and he left some of his better players in in the final minutes of the game. So that's a good thing for the Dons to look at. Yeah, you can kind of see the frustration right now on Coach Fife's face when you look at IPFW's schedule. Next up for the Dons will be Manchester, a game next Wednesday night here at the Coliseum. And then uh, after that, at Indiana State, a winnable game. They've gone to Indiana State and gotten wins in recent history. At Nebraska, that's uh, going to be a rough one. But then Mary Grove comes to town. And then we start to get a little bit into the Summit League schedule. So, I mean, the next several games, uh, Manchester, Indiana State, the Dons could definitely realistically even their record back up to two and two. And uh, then you look at Nebraska and Mary Grove, you think, um, barring upset, that's probably a split. So Dons could be three and three very easily headed into the early portions of the Summit League schedule. If you allow me to play devil's advocate for, here for a moment, you know, sometimes in Division One athletics, you play up to your competition and you have a tendency to play down. And they can't play down to the competition and say, okay, it's Indiana State, so we can take a day off. They right. need to play those guys as tough as they would, Wisconsin or Valparaiso or anybody else. Absolutely. They, uh, they have gotten hurt with that in the past. There's, there's been a couple of occasions, although it has gotten better in recent years. Jakari comes away with the steal. He's off and running the other way. Lays it in. And uh, cut it to a 10-point game. We're under 15 seconds to go now. And Diebler just going to dribble this thing out. And uh, this will be my last shot for the day. Yep, the end of the game. Homer Drew comes in, brings his Valpo team into the Coliseum, comes away with a 10 point win. That does it for us. The Dons unfortunately lost the game, but I believe we uh, have not seen the best of these guys yet. Absolutely, totally agree. We're going to talk a lot about it. We'll talk to uh, IPFW uh, coaches when we come back. 64 to 74, the Dons lose this one. 74 to 64, I should say. A 10 point loss in their home opener of the season to Valpo. Uh, we'll take a quick break when we come back. We'll talk a little bit more about this one.
Welcome back to the post-game show. 74 to 64, IPFW falls to Valpo. Tommy Shegler joined with IPFW assistant coach Dan Bure. We're gonna look over some of the highlights from this game and talk about this game at the same time. Coach, uh, you know, a situation where you guys were able to cut it to three at one point, and then it just kind of got away from you. You know, we came out with with a good energy, I thought, in the, in the second half. We we got about four or five straight stops, and then they had that uh, that steal and the and one that brought it back up to six, and we really couldn't come come back from that. Yeah, showing some of the ball movement, and DeWitt Scott was able to get it going just a little bit after being so cold in the first half. Really got it going in the second half. Talk to me a little bit about um, about this team, and you know there was a portion of the first half where you really struggled to find points offensively, uh, but in the second half it seemed like things started to come together. It, you know, and I was impressed to this being the first time I saw you guys play 29 to 28 on the boards. You guys win on the boards. I mean, it seems like it's a scrappy team and one that is going to fight for you. It, it is a scrappy team, and it is one that's going to fight for us. In the first half, uh, kind of what happened was. We got in a little foul trouble with Z getting his second foul, so we were forced to go with a little smaller of a lineup, and that put us in a position where we had four guards, and we had some guys that, that weren't ready to be screeners and, and weren't you know, kind of sure of their role. Then in the second half, we were able to go back with Z, uh, back with us, and, and it, things kind of started to shape out. We were able to get DeWitt going. DeWitt got his second foul there early in the first half, so we couldn't get him many looks. And they did a good job closing out and containing his three, but DeWitt, being the good player that he is, was able to get shot fakes and stuff going to the basket. How about Jakari Johnson? 18 points for you. Get six boards along the way. Uh, no assists, but uh, you have to be pleased with also getting four guys overall in double figures and 18 points from Jakari Johnson. No question. Jakari did a great job for us. We're really emphasizing getting out and running in transition, and Jakari did a great job doing that. He got a lot of easy baskets and really kept us in, in the game in the first half, really. Yeah, you see him right there getting that one with the steal at midcourt and then the lay-in um, of course you know this is a game and a, a kind of a a little bit of a rivalry even though it's not a conference game you sure. guys have had some some hard-fought battles with them but it, it's good to get a game against like this uh, this type of team uh, early on in the season that you're able to battle against because a passionate game early on in the season no question Valparaiso is definitely an established program you know they're they're constantly fighting to make the NCAA tournament. You know, they used to be in the Midcon, which is our conference now, now the Summit League. And we've never beat Valpo. So this is a challenge that we're going to continue to face. Uh, I think I think IPFW all time is 0-7. I know in, in Coach Fife's tenure, uh, we're now 0-5. And, and, and it stinks. You know, they keep coming to the Coliseum and they keep playing well. And it's, it's a hurdle that we're still trying to climb because, let's face it, Valpo is one of the better mid-major programs in the Midwest and in Indiana, and that's that's where we're competing to be. Manchester next, uh, six days from now. That seems to be a game where you guys can get back on track before you go to Indiana State, a place where you guys have won recently. No question. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna give them tomorrow off, and then come back and work some things out on Saturday, and then get ready to go uh, on Wednesday versus Manchester. Although. You know, they aren't a Division One team. It's a team that we can't take lightly, and, and it's a team that we're going to have to come out and play our best against. And then we, uh, we start a tough road stretch at Indiana State and at Nebraska, and those are two tough games. But like you said, you know, we've had some success in Terre Haute a couple years ago, and we got a lot of those same guys that were with us, and uh, hopefully we can go in and do it again. Coach, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. No, it's not the outcome that you wanted tonight, but definitely some things to build on. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Tommy. We'll keep moving in the right direction here. All right, let's take a look at the uh, at the overall stats uh, here as we start to put them up on the screen. We mentioned several times throughout the game that uh, uh, shooting percentage was something that IPFW was struggling with throughout the game and ended up at 38%. They were able to bring down the uh, the field goal percentage for Valpo, but still, as we bring Keon Henderson back on, uh, 53% from the field, still more than you want to be giving up. Yeah, you don't you don't want to give uh, the opposition half of the shots, and, and and it's difficult to win ball games when you turn the ball over more, right. and you also give them a better shooting percentage. Almost impossible mixture to win a game. Uh, one of the things jumps off of the stat page to me, and it's it's shocking to me considering the fact that the Dons lose by 10, but they won on the boards tonight, and I mean that that's impressive considering. A, a talented Valpo lineup and a team like IPFW is going to struggle all year on the boards. 
Well, you know what? When I played, uh, that was one of the things that Coach Noel told us. We've got to defend and we've got to rebound. And sometimes, you know, big doesn't always uh, mean that you're going to be the best rebounder. It reminds me of a guy named Allen Iverson who's in the NBA right now, and I believe he's averaging about six to eight rebounds right now. Right. There are guys who are 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", who don't even average. It, you know, rebounding is about heart. It's about right. going out there, finding a body, and if you find a body, the ball will find you. Well, really, I think this game comes down to, I mean, it, it comes down to a lot of things, but one of the things that, that is tough for IPFW, uh, we talked throughout the broadcast, is when the outside shot is not falling, they are going to struggle, and tonight they uh, only hit one three-pointer in the second half. Um, overall, only four of 15 on the night, 26%. So, um, you know, some of those threes, Bots was open several times. Scott had a couple looks. Uh, you know, some of those threes drop in. This could be a different ball game. Yeah, it definitely is a different ball game. I tell you what, as I watched the game and I saw some of the guys shoot the threes, uh, they had confident strokes. You know, it looked as if they thought they would make it. But, you know, you have some of those days where no matter how good uh, you think you are prepared and no matter how well you shoot the ball, it just doesn't go in sometimes. Right. And it just seemed like to be one of those nights for the Dons. They will have a better day. You just saw the individual scoring. Some great efforts put out by the Dons. We mentioned uh, in, the co in the interview with uh, Coach Bure that uh, four different players in double figures tonight, led by Jakari Johnson with 18. So they lose by 10. But uh, we will uh, live to fight another day, beginning with, with Manchester here six days from now. So 10-point uh, loss for the Dons. That will do it for us. Keon Henderson making his debut tonight. Good job, my friend. It's been a pleasure, Tom. And we will continue to see you throughout the year. And that is it from the Coliseum. Your final score is 74-64. to 64. Be sure and tune into my TV on Thursday, December 6th for more Mastodon men's basketball action when the Thunderbirds from Southern Utah University come to town in a Summit League conference game. That's Thursday, December 6th at 7 o'clock right here on my TV. For Keon Henderson, I'm Tommy Sheger saying so long from the Coliseum.